Tom, just turn your head a little bit this way. Eyes at the camera. Khalil, tilt your head a little bit more. Yes, right there. <sighs> okay, I'm ready. is living I'm going to uh, start an internet company Do you want twists or braids? I, I, don't, I, I don't want twists Do you want braids? No, I don't want braids You want just two open ponytails? No yeah. Okay, well that's what you've got Okay, look at me Look at me It's okay no, they're, they're actually, if you look they're pretty far off One's up in the front and one's in the back. Do you want them even? No. I no. want them even. No, I don't want them even. Don't move. This is not good enough. Got to get them more even. Even. Well, I know. Life is tough, babe. It's a lot of things, a lot of hardship in life. And one of them is your father doing your hair. That's one of the hardships of life that little girls have to deal with, just like you. How's that? It's beautiful. So what do you think? 
Oh my god, you're wearing a suit that matches. I'm wearing a suit. And a tie. And a tie. I have an important announcement to make. And that is that uh, we have a new CEO. He has recently left Goldman Sachs and is now on full time with public data systems, soon to be GovWorks. So Khalil, welcome to the team. Thank you, Tom. We're glad to have you here. And I want to, uh, in the same vein, thank you guys for your patience. This is the beginning of a great thing. And I'm grateful to all of you for the confidence in me as we're going to be able to make this happen. And we are going to be able to make it happen. <laughs> Just I mean, look at look at that on the screen and tell me that this is not the the brand of the 21st century. <laughs> Govworks.com. We got it. This is it. Well done. Do you use email? Are you on the internet at all? No. It's Do you use line. email? I really don't. You do? Yes. Let me ask you a question. If you had two comp you have you have a company, we're choosing between two names. Right. One name is GovWorks or Nextown, N E X T O W N. If you were, if you were going to invest in, in one in of those town. Two, you would rather invest in Nextown Next than in Why? Right. Works? Why? Why? Sounds better, I don't know. Next it just town. attract me more. I don't like government. I don't like being a company. It's called Gov. Listen, 10 minutes ago, bro, we were slapping high fives and giving hugs and spreading love. <laughs> and now you're ready to quit the company. <laughs> What company do you work for? Next Town. Do you work where in the Next Town? Let Kalal work for Next Town. No, no, no. Do this with me. Yeah. yeah, do it, do it. Yeah, what's the name of your company? Next Town, Next Town Technologies. I work for GovWorks. What do you do? Oh, we're an internet portal. We facilitate interactions between local government and their constituents. We help government work. We don't have, you don't have 11 dollars. I got four bucks. <laughs> He's shaking us down. It, Dave. This is the billion dollar startup. Can't pay for dinner. <laughs> you know what? Forget about investors. What do you want? See, I want the company to be called untocaesar.com. That's the whole problem. Okay. Hi, I'm Kalal. Um, coming to sell you a $2 million systems integration, uh, Mr. Mayor. And I'm from Unto Caesar. Yeah. Nice to meet you. <laughs> yeah. Come on now. I, I can live with it because I love it. You know what? At this point, Kalel, why don't you close your eyes or take a walk and come back with a decision? Because that's that's ultimately what it's going to have to be. And when you come back, the decision is going to be final and definitive, yeah. and we're all going to be happy about I'm it. I'm going to go meditate for about two minutes. <clears throat> I did what I do before every major decision in my life, and that is sit and meditate. And I decided that we are GovWorks. And that... That's it. Call it govworks.com for now. We're not entirely sure what it's going to be. But you go to govworks.com to do basically anything you do with local government. It's a pretty tremendous market space. Uh, it's a vertical market of $586 billion. When you look at parking tickets in New York alone, it's about a $500 million market. So there's a lot of money sloshing around in this marketplace to get a few crumbs up. It means a lot. Um, we think we have a, a, a set of uh, relationships and, um, that can make this happen. It's a matter of execution. You'll get the money, right. and we've seen that. You, you'll get the money, and I think you'll get the team. I think it's a business that goes. Who do you think? The, who's the competition? The guys that you know potentially keep me up at night, you know, you know, Sidewalk.com or City Search or somebody's deciding mm -hmm. that they want to do this. Th that's why speed is king. I mean, yeah. you, 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 
first no mover question. first mover advantage is you know they'll they'll be like any other market they'll they'll be two three people who make it here one who gets half the market two other people who share mm -hmm. the right. other half and everybody else who loses right. Hello. Come on, let's get out of here. Galo, you need to get dressed. You can sleep in the car, but let's go. Come on, you slept two hours. What more do you need? You're a superstar. You don't need more than two hours sleep. Come on. Come on. Get up. Okay, let's get out of here in five minutes, all right? Believe it, dude. We're here. By the way, you keep saying we're in San Francisco. This is not San Francisco. This is Silicon Valley. It's ringing. Is that a cell phone? Hey, it's Tom. <laughs> hey, baby. I, I want to pass on some good news. I can hardly contain myself. I got a lunch, Kleiner Perkins at noon. Fantastic. And I and I, ha I just got off the phone with the guy there, and he said, you know, we really like your idea. We know everybody in the valley. We just want to talk about the idea. You know, we'll help you shape the idea as well. And if you get, if you know, if we're able to do this, we can move extremely fast. <laughs> it's starting to pay off for us, man. I want you to know that I have probably probably five or six people coming in for tech interviews tomorrow. So it's like an unbelievable, I've already canceled a couple of things for tomorrow. It's an unbelievable uh, schedule. Thanks, gentlemen. Bye. That's it. Okay. Wow, these guys are freaking out. That's fucking awesome, man. I mean, it's just like now we're actually standing outside the office of Kleiner. Oh my God, like it's beautiful out here. So. Anyway, it's really nice. It's really nice. So, the, the last point I was going to make for you is, is that um, works has a very specific meaning in the software world, uh, and it refers to a very lightweight, you know, low-end product. The guy basically gave us very candid advice. Does not like working with government. Was, you know, felt like we have to be on the West Coast to run an internet business. Was. Uh, you know, said we were uh, passe because we went in with a, with documents instead of a computer presentation. Um, said that you know we were um, you know two to three years behind the times. That we you know didn't uh, have anybody with startup experience. He like didn't, have didn't like the sapient experience. relationship. Didn't like the IT implementation experience. I mean, he like was just there to tear us apart. He said the East Coast sucks. He said you know if you have a business in the East Coast, you're going to spend all your time here anyway. I mean, it's not as if he did it out of the goodness of his heart. This guy doesn't get it. Hit a story. Or we can switch. No, no, we gotta switch to West 4th and get this one. No. They're fun to go. That's a good question, guys. 700 billion? I would. I would guess. I mean, it's one of the larger funds in the country. Name recognition I've got. It's still is. I'm not sure you and I have met yet. I'm Tom from Tom, Dave Hodgson. Yeah. I've already got three cards. We want some more. I love one. Thank you. All right, Frank, I'll let you go. Thanks. We're not um, replacing government. Uh, we, you know, to answer your question in three years from now, we want to be a place that facilitates government processes that made economic sense to us. And, you know, the place that you think of, like, three years from now, the first place that you think of to deal with red tape locally, that you just think, like, there's got to be some application on govworks.com. I'm very interested in the building space. People will come in to town hall and they say, we can't find the building plans. There's an obvious solution to that. We get a digital camera, we set something up in the vault downstairs. Someone requests a building plan online. It gets uploaded to our server. They, you know, give us $50 and they've got it on CD-ROM. 
Um, and Having said that, that's not the business we're in. <laughs> no, but it is. But it, it's I a mean, business. It, it's, it's a, a business, business, and it's part of what we can do. Stuff doesn't change. Like Tom goes into this story about digital cameras in the basement of some place in Springs that's got nothing to fucking do with our business. And it's like you know, I could there's I could talk about like some retail business in Virginia that I think was like, uh, and it doesn't matter that it's like neat or that it occurred to him when he was in Springfield. It's got nothing to do with our business and it makes us look unfocused and he does it yeah, again and again focus. and again. What uh, the fuck? And, and not, not only are we stuck, I swear to God the business will fail if he does that. Tom, Kaleo, we need to have a strategy discussion immediately. I don't care if we, I miss the first data meeting and you miss the rest of the day on Sapien because we're giving different messages to different people and we can't do that. Uh, we can't have a meeting with strong capital where we give one message and you walk in the room and say, I disagree, I disagree, and this is the other way we're going to do it kind of thing. It's really, really painful for me to, 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 to try to make this successful when I feel like I have to fight at each juncture every single day on the same issues, man. Please call me as soon as you can on my cellular. So I just wanted to kind of open it up to discussion. Uh, maybe I feel more strongly about it than, than, than other folks. And maybe, you know, maybe there's... Um... When I sat there, I wasn't thinking, oh, here's a VC that we want to impress. I was thinking, oh, here's someone who's on our team, who's funded us, who wants to have a discussion about our strategy, and we should, you know, play devil's advocate in both directions. And... We should all trust that any one of us will represent a vision of the business that will be seconded and thirded and fourth and fifth by other people on the team, even if we don't really know. Even if the, the part that we're seconding is, well, we're exploring that. That's something we're debating. Even if it's like, you know, yeah, we're really excited about this. And, you know, even if this might change later, then we'll all change it once and we'll all have a unified story while we're changing. But because we're, you know, the, the act of, of, the, of the contradicting each other is so much bigger than the act of actually what the substance of the conversation is, because that's what they're looking for. They're that's looking for that. from day one, right? Yeah, is that's what the they're looking for. I agree, but again, we we were in our our confrontation and debate space. We should never be in that space in front of anybody. He's the lead investor in this, this guy company. Set the price, right? This guy is price setting in the second round. Yeah. I mean, the impact in, in the right, room. I understand that. And okay. I don't want to hear it. Yeah, The chairman and former CEO of Jackson Securities in Atlanta. And the chairman of the Maynard Jackson Youth Foundation. You're going too fast. After the uh, Jackson Securities. He's a chairman and founder of the Maynard Jackson Youth Foundation. As many of you know, Khalil and I went to high school together. We've talked over the last couple of years about starting a business like this. And uh, back in November, um, when, when he called me and he said this was after almost a year of throwing ideas back and forth like virtual tombstones and online wedding registries and a whole host of other things, he called me and he said, how about parking tickets? And, uh, you know, I said, wow, Kalel, that is the best idea I've heard in a long time. And uh, thank you, Kalel, for leading us here. Finally, I would like to invite uh, Maynard Jackson to close for us. He's, as you know, a uh, three-term former mayor of, uh, of Atlanta. Atlanta, Georgia. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's great to have him on our board of directors. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Appreciate it. I see this group as more than a company. I see this as, as a mission. I think there's great success lying down the road, and I think the primary reason for the great success is it's a legitimate idea to help people. And incidentally, we're going to make a lot of money. <laughs> That's the best of all the worlds. This is an enthusiasm shout. So everybody stand up. Take your hands out of your pockets. Put them by your side. Get a deep breath. 
I'm going to ask you, what are we going to do? You're going to say, rock, but you're going to lift this roof. When are we going to do it? Every day. How are we going to do it? Every way. Are you ready? Yes. Are you ready? Yes. What are we going to do? Rock When are we going to do it? Every day. How are we going to do it? Every way. I'm just, I'm nauseous. I'm so tired, I'm nauseous. Like, I feel I'm on the verge of collapse. When is, when is your sister going to be available? And does she want to answer phones? Yeah, she's fine answering phones. Okay, um, so bottom line is where are we roughly in the checkbook? To close to zero. Just like, I thought we would be there. We're like, around 20K, right? Yeah. So plus the 100, so we're back up at like 100. Yeah, plus Julian's dad wired 100, right? Yeah. What is the, who is the biggest hitter on the planet that we can have call Highland? Who is the, who is the biggest hitter that we know in life that can call Bob Higgins at Highland? Chris Davey, you got Chris Davey? You want to get on, George? Chris, this is a this is a big call for all three of our kind of professional lives. But I have um, a favor of a lifetime to, to ask you. Um, we could be done with this financing process with one of the best VCs in the land. We really want Highland. If you can help them understand our business model, we could really make this big. And the rubber's hitting the road like now. Well, this is definitely what we were waiting for. We're really excited. This is the kind of buy-in that we needed. Thank you. Sure. You look really good now. Shut up. Irresistible even. Shut up. How are you? Good. How are you? Is Bob around? Yes, he is. And your name again? Kalel Isasa Tasman. <laughs> and a card? Tom? Yeah. This world we're about to enter is like, I, I get a real kick out of this stuff. So I'm going to be a bit of a no problem. hard ass. You know, as much as you'd rather be back in the office, I'm realizing that I would much rather for you to be here. Done. Is that okay? Yeah. This is Kaleli Sasa Tuzman from GovWorks.com. I need to speak to Isaac. Uh, Kaleli, he's not in at the office at the moment. Can I take a message or would you like his voicemail? Um, let me ask for your advice. It's, it's an urgent call. We're at Highland Capital in Boston. They've just put a term sheet on the table. Uh-huh. And uh, Isaac is our counsel. Right. And uh, we have basically uh, about an hour window to sign or not sign this thing. We're about to transact, you know, definitely the biggest transaction of my life. Okay. Um, and it's a, it's a pretty big number. Uh, they're, they're offering to put in a $17 million investment in the company. Okay. You, can, you can understand my... Uh, yeah. <laughs> we're, we're basically negotiating the sale of our baby here, so... I'm sure glad you didn't go back. Oh, yeah, this would suck to be here alone, huh? Yeah. I'm glad you got a good night's sleep, too. Yeah. Uh, not as much as I no. would like to... What the hell is her fucking lawyer? It's embarrassing the hell out of us that we don't have legal representation. I mean, really. I mean, it, it, it really doesn't make sense. And, and we need to get eyes on the term sheet, and we need feedback now. Let's just... Let's dump them after Absolutely. they do this. Yeah. I mean, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Tom, I think my computer just blew up and I just did this whole spreadsheet. What happened? Has uh, your screen been... The screen started like, like uh, little things started appearing on the screen and breaking up different applications, and then I did a, a shutdown. 
Well, Isaac, speak. Hi, Isaac. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm okay. You have us uh, in the lurch here. Well, hey, listen, I apologize, guys, but, you know, I've been out of the, uh, the office and I'm still at the printer. I've been here for the last uh, four days. Yeah. We've done our diligence on these guys, and they, they have, I mean, they're the, the yeah, only yeah. VC that I've, and I've at this point visited, you know, probably 12 of the top 15 VCs in the country. Mm -hmm. They're the only ones that everyone likes. We want to do this. The question is, are, do you think we're getting screwed? <laughs> these guys are talking all nice about how, you know, they don't want to be too in our faces, and they want to let us, you know, continue to run things, and... And, uh, you know, they're not going to be too controlling about who we bring in as other investors and all of this stuff. And, uh, you know, you definitely get the sense that once all's said and done, they're going to definitely be uh, aggressively managing this investment. You know, Bob Higgins from, from Highland just walked in the room. So whenever you guys are ready, uh, just let me know. Bob Higgins, this is a uh, partner of Wilson Satini, Isaac Vaughn, who's on the right council. How are you? Great. What's the total amount of money we're raising? Up to seventeen million. It's good that it's good that you're asking because it's changed from that document. It, the if on the investment section in the beginning. I think maybe you should have Isaac. If, if are you going through this for the first time with Isaac? Yeah. Yeah. Well, maybe you should get a chance to have him go through it with you. I think you guys should feel well educated on the legal issues, and if we okay. want to have lawyers involved, that's okay with me. But right. uh, yeah, I just, I mean, I just that's, do not. That's a fair point. You don't have your attorney there, do you? Correct. Why don't we why don't we split the difference and do a cap at one eighty? Split it between four and five X. Are you okay with that? It's at four to five X. Four and a half. Right, so four and a half. Four and a half. All right, fine. Are okay? we agree on everything else? Because if we keep reopening, you just reopen the options, which I think was terrific. You just said, Isaac, how do you feel about the options? I was asking for his opinion. I know, I know, but I, but I mean, I, I want to, I don't want to agree. We're not reopening. I, I'm open to all these as soon as we can resolve all the We're, issues. You know that I'm trying to finish yeah. this up. So let's finish it up. We're finishing Are we up. there? I have one more question. <laughs> one more question. Yeah. I'm thorough. We, we'd agree so to... So I'm agreeing to none of these things until we surface all the issues. You know what I mean? Highland is not going to give us anything. They are more trouble to us at this point. They're a pain in the ass. They're telling us what to do with the fucking board of directors. They are giving us a lousy valuation. They're diluting the shit out of us before they come in. And, and, and we're wasting our time to boot. Of these, of these, of this shit. Like, I just want to, like, let's just raise some money and go do the fucking thing. The best things in life are free, but you can keep them for the birds and bees. Money. Uh, 10 million of the deal uh, yesterday and yeah so what do you think is going to happen Jose? Um, I think it's going to be Highland Finer 8 and 6 and we're going to go IPO in 6 months you're going to be a billionaire that's what I want you're going to be a billionaire I'm going to be a, a lowly millionaire but that's okay Dude, oh, yeah. you know, Kaleo's two favorite words are heuristic oh, and holistic. Yeah. I'm so sick of see hearing heuristic, heuristic. Come out of your mouth. Heuristically, you know, <laughs> it's a holistic heuristic. No, no, it's, it's heuristic and it's query. And I'm so sick of hearing both. Query? Query. <laughs> query as to whether or not, you know, Kaleo will say heuristic again. <laughs> <laughs> and visceral. Visceral is another good one. A visceral is all right. Mr. Chung, 
It's gonna. It's time to get to work, man. Huh? All right. We've all been like working all night on the business plan. We've been leaving you messages. Okay. We're over at Khalil's place. Like everybody's there practically. It's a significant stake, and I understand he put money in. But he, if he doesn't believe in the business, and that's why he hasn't left his job, right? Hey, it's the layout, man. Um, look, dude, we, the entire team has been here um, basically the last two days working on this, and you know, I don't know what the what the deal was, you know, when Julian came over. But I'm going to be pretty fucking disappointed if you don't get over here and uh, and help us out. You know, there's there's employees busting their ass for the company. It's just not fair. He's a minority shareholder, and you guys can buy him out. It's Keith. Oh, it is? Yeah. What's up, dude? We actually put this together last time. This is what we worked on. Here's the revenue. There's yours, you know, these pages are basically the revenue model, and here's the outcome for three different scenarios. Tom, the other reason I just wanted to call you, I know it's an awkward time, but it makes a hell of a lot of sense for a lot of reasons to buy out uh, Key and, and Susan at a dollar a share. Think about it, I mean, from his perspective, it's it's quite a nice thing. I mean, you walk away with a half a million bucks. So, Key, what are we gonna do? I don't think it'll get ugly for us. There shouldn't be a need to come to that. I hope. No, Key, I would be stronger than that. It won't get ugly. And we all are friends, so we'll make this work. Nothing. One of the saddest things about business is, and I never realized it before, when you watch ideas, like anything, maybe this is how parents feel about their children, but when you watch them grow, there's kind of a sadness to when they grow beyond what you can do for them. It really is. Take a step outside of yourself. I know it's not your style. So make, make an extra special effort to be, to give warm fuzzies. Okay? Trust me. It'll go a long way, Keith. And figure out something where you, I, and Tom don't get bogged down. That's the best thing. Key, yeah, how old are you? 24, Flo. I turned 25 in October. Dude. Hey, Key, this is Tom. Listen, I wanted to just get a chance to talk with you. Um, the cash alone seems like a, a sum of money that, that I would be like, I wouldn't know what to do with. What I don't understand is what sort of really changed between today and, and yesterday. But my point is that, you know, we are we founders. We're not just employees. We put together a lot of sort of sweat, and a lot of the value of the company and all the intellectual capital is created in the very beginning. Hey, Key, calm down. You're going to be sitting at Goldman Sachs making a half a million dollars, and you'll be fine. Key, I'm, I'm, I'm fighting for you on this issue. I mean, don't turn on me. What was it that, that was the, the final proposal? Mayfield's attitude has been like this. They started kind of talking about $500,000 as a buyout for Key, and have gone like that each day. And I've been telling Key that each day. Key, every day, this gets worse. He thinks it's getting better, and it ain't getting better, it's getting worse. He put up cash, yeah. he worked hard. The man worked after hours for about four months, five months, um, and put in presumably $19,000 of his own money and would be walking away, and his career is totally intact, didn't take any risk, and be walking away with $400,000. And, and, I mean, they would prefer if he just took all the cash, so he could put, take over, like, $410,000. It's hard to... It's sweetheart. It's a sweetheart deal. He also insinuated to me this evening on the phone all kinds of other nasty things he can do. If he thinks I'm going to respond well to threats, he's, he's, he's sadly mistaken. Well, you know, you know he probably the best. I mean, definitely. Are you, is this something we need to be worried about? He's not going to get any mileage out of me. I'll smush him. 
mean, I don't like being threatened. And I think that he realizes that his well, legal case is, is no, no, weak. No, but that doesn't mean that he couldn't sabotage the Goldman relationship, sabotage the potential the Goldman IPO, sabotage you the business, get on, get on sabotage, go. sabotage us personally. Can it's disgusting. Easy Why not? You can do whatever the fuck he wants. He couldn't get on the phone, but he could send him a manila envelope. Key, it's Tom. Is he awake? I'm awake. Let's, let's just boil this right down to its essence. This is about money for you. And you want 800000 bucks, and this offers $400,000. Okay? It's sad and, and ironic that it's about that, but it is about that. So, you know, I'm feeling extorted. We don't want to have a litigious situation, and don't BS me. It's, it's, it's about the money. It's obviously about the money. So just tell me how much money you need. Well, I believe it's more than right to me. Right, you want $800,000. This offers $400,000. Do you want cash or equity? Right. Can we split it down the middle, Kate? It's not going to be through the VCs. And if, and it's gonna it's gonna have to be, you know, it's gonna have to be personal. That feels right to you that we should pay you off cash out of our pockets. Okay. Okay. There we are. So um, sounds like we need to give you seven hundred thousand dollars. Now, given that we are giving you seven hundred thousand dollars, is that worth it for the for the relationships? He, look, he's answered the question. He's already answered the question. It's painful, George, but yeah. that's the answer. If the money is definitely more important. Okay. Then yeah, then, then it's so guys. It's answered the question. question. Let's just let's do it. Yeah. Key, if you thought I cared about the shares, the number of shares at all. You're yeah, you're way off. I don't even know how many shares I own. Hey, Tommy. Yeah. Hmm. Did that hurt you a lot? Yeah. That was much more personal for you than it was yeah, for me. Yeah, it was. I'm sorry. Hey, Tom. Yeah. I you know you're you're one of the the um, the most amazing people that I've ever known. You fit into that category too. Definitely. They won't close. The VCs won't close until this is a resolved issue. Okay, well, my personal solution with Key should not stop the financing. We're running out of money, Tom. Jose's flipping out. He's tearing his hair out. We don't have money. Do you want to call him and ask him to no, come? No, I don't you? want to have I don't want to talk to him. Each page is in triplicate. What'd you tell him as far as the retreat's concerned? I told him to go to hell. Did you really? No, I said you're not invited. Please don't come. In about that time, I had exactly those words. No one likes getting nabbed for a traffic ticket, but one website is pitching a way to keep the police at bay, sort of. It's a website that meshes with your local municipality, allowing you to pay everything from tickets to taxes virtually. Kalal Isasa Tuzman uh, is our, our guest. Welcome to Digital Jam. I promised I wouldn't garble it too much. Why don't you say it once so we, we get it correct? Kalal Isasa Tuzman. It's been happening my whole life, Steve, so <laughs> I'm used to it. Uh, you got, I think, 15 million bucks from the Mayfield Fund. Are you looking for uh, another round anytime soon? Uh, I think they reported that uh, uh, slightly. It was a slightly low number. Uh, we, we raised uh, almost $20 million uh, from a number of players in the West and, and East Coast. Uh, we might do a, another round in the next few months. Uh, which would mean that on paper the company is, is worth uh, what now? Current valuation of the company is uh, just shy of $50 million. Speechless. Thank you all very much. This is uh, this is wonderful, and I don't think that I could ask for a lot more to happen on my birthday. <laughs> and 
have a lot to do before I turn 30. <laughs> How old do you know? Um, I'm 28. I want to toast my uh, partner and brother Rat, Tom. And, for, and back at you. And, uh, and all of you for all of the wonderful, wonderful work in making this dream a reality. And the other one, and we need a drum roll for this, a serious drum roll. And the grand prize goes to Jose and Kenneth for closing Thank you for coming all this distance this morning. And it, it wouldn't be a true summer camp adventure without a camp director. Um, and so thank you very I'd much. Like to introduce you thank you, thank you. My name is Richard, Richard Herman. And this is a very proud moment for me, as it is for Tom's mom, Susan Herman, right there. Tom and Kaleo, who spent their high school years under my roof and under Kaleo's mother's roof, dreaming and scheming about their futures. So I was very excited and proud to have that honor of being the first one to write the first little check. Um, in, <laughs> I am Tom's dad, in case you were wondering. Now I know it's kind of peculiar, probably, for you, me to expect you to sing at uh, Five minutes of nine on Saturday morning after you've been driving all night. But let's do it anyhow. From the beginning, I want to wake up in the morning where the purple lilacs grow, where the sun comes peeping into where I'm sleeping and the songbirds say hello, hello. I want to wander through the wildwood where the fragrant breezes blow and drift back to New Hampshire where the purple lilacs grow. I'd love to tell you guys a little bit about this, this place that we're in right now because it's one of the more special places actually in my life. It has somewhat of a cathedral feel to it, and it's always been one of the places that I've come to meditate. If you're all really silent, you can hear the wind going through the pine needles up above in a really remarkable fashion, and it makes it an even more special place to meditate. Tommy, Tommy, it's Kaleo. Wonderful weekend. You're a superhero for what you did this weekend. I thought it was fantastic for the team, and thank you for your flexibility with me as we struggled through some of these leadership issues. Um, tomorrow, uh, we have a news crew in from a national television show called Despierta America, which means Wake Up America. This is all Dora's wonderful doing. Uh, Senator Gonzalez can't know that Dora and I are dating. Could I ask the people that are at both ends to get closer because we're looking for the visual effect of a lot of people screaming together. If you can use your hands as excited as you can get, as, as visual as you can get, the better. Okay. I'm going to say the lines here. Don't worry about what I'm saying. You just have to say the big ones. C is the first one. C. 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 Ganar. Ganar. Siempre. Siempre. Trabajando. 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 Okay. The J is a huh. <laughs> 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 Make sure when you say the last one, trabajando, if you can put your right fist up. No, no. 
That's, well, a, that's the symbol of Nazi party. We're not right. doing that. We're <laughs> serious. We're not doing that. Okay. Okay. Uh, see, if you want to do it like yeah, this, that's fine. Right. 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 to get me a dog. I want him to get me a dog, but I, he doesn't want to get me a dog. And he's telling me that if I move in with him, he'll get me a dog. And then every time I get close to making this decision, he kind of backs out on the dog a little bit. I really want him to get me a dog. And I think that he can uh, take the dog to work. And I figure that if he gives the dog the name, then maybe he will be more attached to the dog. I really want to be with Khalil for many, many years. And I'm proud of him. And I'm sure that this is going to slow down a little bit. And I'm sure that he will be proud of my career as well, and I will be proud of his career. But this has been a very interesting time. And, uh, and this whole gov work situation has a very human side to it, because uh, you see a whole bunch of guys acting very very grown up with their ties and their cufflinks and their little pens and their, their, their credit cards. They, uh, they look so, uh, they, they, um, they're such grown up gentlemen. But you know what? They're not. Yeah, I'm, I'm in the zone, Mom. You're in the zone. I am, I'm doing what I want to be doing. I'm so happy. So is everything all right? Everything's fine. So why are you calling me at 1 in the morning? I could have been sleeping. Well, are, are you in love with Dora? Well, I don't know. You don't know? I mean, I don't know. I'm taking it slow. Take it slow. That's great. No hurry. I know that... The it's... problem is I go into zones of, like, being attracted and not being attracted. You go through, I'm sorry, what did you I mean? go through ups and downs of being attracted to her. Uh... Like, I never don't like her. I never don't love her, even, but I... I That's go, important to be aware of. Well, yeah, it is. I don't know. Maybe it's fear. You know, maybe it's like getting to commitment. You have fear. You have fear. Dora says some things like, you know, you have to buy me a puppy because, you know, it's either a puppy or a child, and that kind of thing freaks me out, Mom. Well, because I don't want a puppy or a child. Yeah. Hi. 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 Hello. David, this is my mother, Annie. This is David Carter. Hi. Pleasure to meet you. Meet you. He's been doing a he's been doing a decent job. A decent job. She she's she's only proud when I when I when I when I do something felling, when I do something nice. This kind of stuff doesn't make her proud. No, what do you mean? I mean, the, the outward accomplishment stuff is, I don't know. So you know the outer accomplishments are a reflection of the inner, too. Oh, uh, all right. So it's not like, you know what I mean? It's not like neti net. You know, I mean, it Very is. Very good. It was nice of you to give us a bus. I didn't think I was going to be able to stop by. I didn't think you want me to. So I called and said, well, if you want me to stop by, just tell yeah, me. I understand not? if you don't. Why not? It's up to you. No, we're the same way. That's how I am, man. I don't know Atlanta that well. You guys on uh, on Peachtree is that? Seventeenth Peachtree. Okay. Yeah. The um. It's, it's a totally strategic move on Khaled's part to um, to sort of invite the competitor in and see like and see how we operate, especially if they're not at this level. So I'd recognize his face you know, from the website that I look at every day, you know, and I thought, oh my goodness, what is happening here? Mr. Camp. Yes. This is Brian Mundy. Hey. Brian Mundy, David Camp. Hey, Brian. Hey, Brian. Your name is familiar. Chairman of Easy Go. Easy Go. And That's why it's familiar. How are you? Good, good. How you guys doing? Excellent. David, VP of Marketing. What's the big trade secret that, you know, you're dying to ask of us and that we're dying to ask of you? Uh, what's the big What's the big launch plan question of the day? I don't have any. Come on. No, you gotta I don't. Have, no, you gotta, no. I mean, you came in here. I, I, I can't believe that you came in here just out of, you know, pure, you know, Goodwill and curiosity. You gotta get to know me then. <laughs> That's exactly the kind of person I am. Okay. Now you'll be surprised further down the road. You say, "Man, why did Brian do that? That really helps us." 
I'll, I'll help. I'll help anybody I can. I mean, that's just the way we are. Hey, Chris Pouillos, hey, Brian Mundy. Nice to meet you. you. Sean Corr, Brian Mundy. Hey, Sean. How's Brian Mundy. How are you? Uh, Brian is the chairman of our, our chief competitor, Easy Guff. And, uh, so so you've you got the bug planted now, or what? Right. <laughs> now, everyone's, you're getting a lot of flack. I don't know. We didn't, we, didn't, we didn't go out and slander your company or no, anything. We, we, just, we just heard about yeah. you in the, the public a week ago. Yeah. Um, I don't know what I did to freak everybody out. You, you probably don't want to go home wearing this. I think you should. That's awesome. But, but you know. I love your logo, too, by the way. Yeah, okay. This one, yeah. <laughs> is it? Yeah, it's yeah, the that David's is great. doing. I don't know if that's the right size. I know I can adjust it. But let's make sure we get this Are right. Are people going to be surprised yeah. when you walk into your office with that? <laughs> the only thing I ask for is a, is a trade. I want, I want uh, I'll get you one. I got your car. We'll send one up. Perfect. Good. Good deal. These are right. great. Anyway, I'm going to disappear. It was a pleasure to see you. Yeah, good to meet you. I uh, appreciate everybody being here. and uh, we, we, uh, We're real excited about government going online. We're real excited about easygov.com being that destination. We will be available uh, next door for interviews, and um, we'll, we'll certainly look forward to developing a relationship with you all in the months and years to come as we deliver more and more applications uh, over the Internet. The easygov.com revolution begins. See this, ironically, as a positive event in this marketplace. Not, there's no smoke and mirrors in that comment. They see it as a sign of fear. <laughs> they see it as a sign of fear. They know we're launching. They're launching something that is not comparable. They are following our footsteps. They're using our language. They're using our ideas. And it's OK. Imitation is the best form of flattery. I refuse, refuse, refuse to lose. I will, there, there are some people in this room who have, who have known me for quite a long time. And I get my fingernails into the wall. You have to drag me away. I will not, not lose this fight. So hang with me. This is going to be a fun ride. I, I was trying to, I felt it in my bones. I was trying over the last couple of weeks, you know, tell people that I could feel it's going to get bumpy. You know, that's what happens when you've got a great idea and we're, and we're in a big market. It's going to get bumpy. It's going to get rough and tumble. Let's stick to who we are. Before the, we cheer for Kaleo, because... Don't cheer for me. Because I think that his leadership in this kind of situation is what is really going to make this happen. I know that a lot of you feel very differently now than you did about three minutes ago. Um, and that's because of his ability to lead a group. I also wanted to add a couple of things to that, not the least of which is that I've never seen Kaleo lose a fight either, except possibly with me. Um, but Kaleo is Saza Tuzman, Robert Hicks. Kaleo is GovWorks.com. Last week they closed an $18.5 million round. They're going to make municipal government efficient. Good luck. It's quite a challenge. It's a $600 billion market. All these markets are big. It's a matter who's going who's to make money in them. That's a big question. <laughs> the former president of New York Telephone, but is now running the world. <laughs> it's a good thing to do. It's good to know the free world. No, no, well, yeah, not quite. Mr. Rockefeller, before he sits down. Uh, people, people keep saying like, oh, it's just, a, it's it's great, and you know, it's just amazing how it's growing and all the rest, and. And yet, each morning I wake up with like a morbid fear of like, of you know, just making sure the business survives another day. The, the VCs are not in this for charity. Scoping is strategy. It's what you're gonna, what you're gonna you know, do. Yeah, so if we make the scoping decisions, and you come back and say, I don't like how this ended up getting scoped. Let's rescope it. There's a certain point at which you do have to give up a little bit of the of the strategy to us. We can't all do everything. I totally trust you in the in the uh, in the venture capital space. I think that my strategic input 
into the building of our product is important. I and uh, I don't nobody, nobody and, disagrees. And I think that it's it's is it more important than getting the money? It's not more important than getting the money. I agree. Now we we might be at a place where we have to compromise to a certain degree and you just I think part of it is a compromising of ego. Yeah, it's not an ego thing. And I'm not saying that you're not important in the process, but I, I do strongly feel that there's a limited bandwidth and there's a lot of stuff to get done and you need to focus on the, on the financing stuff. The scope of our product, which I was a, a person that was deeply involved with creating the vision of the product, is a point at which I need to be involved. And I won't feel comfortable moving forward if I'm not involved. Right. So let's set it aside at time when it's convenient for you and maybe it's like, you know, from 8 o'clock at night to 8 o'clock in the morning. We should, we should do a weekend block. Yeah. That's what we I'm should do. I'm not available for weekend blocks. I'm with my daughter on weekends. End of story. I didn't tell Tia that I wasn't going to see her this weekend. Down and I get a lap? Yes, and look. Look, look, get me up. And look. You can't jump up? Yep. Do you want to read a book with me before I go? Where are you going? I have to go tonight. I have to go. No, but I can't. You're going to hang out with Nana. You're not usually as upset about this. Build. Obviously, we'll test that build. We'll test it all day today, all day. We'll go live onto the site. Uh, we'll test it all day on the site, Saturday, Sunday, and, and then obviously we'll go public on Monday. In the ask, I said parking tickets. And it says, help us refine your question. By park, do you mean last name park or first name park? That's horrible. Parking tickets. Do you mean the last name or the first name? No. <laughs> no, but it, the last name Park. Has anyone gotten a good answer to anything in that? No. Not that I know. Let's try speeding tickets. Okay, I put speeding tickets in, and it gave me the name of the personnel director in I don't even know what town. Charles Speed, the personnel director at Amarillo, Texas. <laughs> oh, this ask functionality is an embarrassment. Yesterday he was asking me, the mayor first name or mayor last name? <laughs> the next biggest issue, I think, is, is, is which everyone here in the room discovered is ask. Um, ask just simply doesn't work. I can't release this site. I can't put it into the market. There's some very angry board members, and I, and I don't want that anger to come onto my head. We've raised $50 million. We're out in the market raising another $100 million. We're in a market space that could, that could have a, the leader in this market space is going to be a multi-billion dollar company. It's the, it's the largest uncharted territory on the net. David, when are we going to have a chance to see the final site? Because we're still, I'm still waiting stuff on the home page. It's not done yet. Actually, you can see it from home. As soon as it's up, it's up. But I, I, can't, I don't know when to call and tell you and say, OK, that's it. That's the final one. 
And I'd like to sign off yeah. before it goes up. Right. Go downstairs and close testing. Yeah, it's not there because it's very good. Close it off. Yeah. Thanks very much. Testing is over. You may continue from assuming. home. Okay, good. Let's do that then. Hey guys, I've asked the entire GovWorks test team to continue their work from GovWorks. This is stuff that can be done from a different facility. But this is much more efficient. We have a lot of people here. We have momentum. We're going into a big week. We're paying them eight and a half million dollars. I understand. Who cares what they, I mean, seriously, Tom, it doesn't matter. The least they can do is keep the damn floor open. I take one first. It's going to piss everyone off. Forget it. Well, that's not David, I want to keep this floor open. I, I didn't. Tom yeah. said that. I, okay, I, great. We're 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 keeping the floor open, guys. I'm sorry, guys, about the back and forth. I'm sorry about the confusion. All right. Got it. Thank you. I'd like to pay my parking ticket before we go live. So you you don't want to pay it on the live side. Transaction complete. It is a cool little engine. Can I take my two seconds right now then as people are leaving and just say thank you? It's been an incredible weekend. The uh, engineers who are here working for the last however many days, it's been amazing. But thanks a lot. Let's go drink some beer. <laughs> live tonight. We did it. What an amazing weekend. Khalil was right. We should have pushed for this and we we did and we're there. be good now to, uh, I'll just go over to Khalil Tuzman, the co-founder and uh, CEO of GovWorks.com, uh, to talk, uh, and the uh, floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. President. I have the great pleasure to be sitting next to Professor Putnam, who used to be the dean of the School of Government, where I was intended to finish my graduate studies and, and, and didn't. Um, so, <laughs> I feel <laughs> particularly empowered. Uh, uh, when it comes to uh, democratic representation, I mean, there's nothing that can fulfill really uh, atomic level uh, representative democracy like the internet. It was fun. And afterwards, they showed you talking to you know Clinton one on one. Oh, really? And, and Speedo swears that you handed him, like, a business card. I did. Yeah. <laughs> I did hand right. it. I know. You, yeah. you see, like, you're And I also, I also talked to him about the CEO, Jeff. Did you really? <laughs> and we're all watching, like, we're definitely telling him, like, you know, what the options package is. And <laughs> I was talking about that stuff. I told him that when he moved to New York that he should, you know, consider a, uh, a job with us that, you know, if Hillary wins, that, he, that he'll be, yeah, so. It was unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> Just call and say, I'm here, I'm okay, it's okay, I'm doing okay, you're doing okay, I love you, I will not be able to see you for about four or five days, but I'll call you tomorrow. One time I will call you. And Kale says, you measure my love in phone calls. It's not in phone calls. It's that if you pick up the phone and say, Dorita, I'm going to be working until crazy, I won't be seeing you for a couple of days, and I love you and everything's and I'm okay. Are you okay? Yes, I'm okay. With, with that, with, with that, you can keep me going three weeks. Hello? Hello? Andres, I'm, I'm terribly sorry to wake you at this hour. It's Kaleo. Um, 
We have a little bit of a situation. Uh, we had a break into the office last night, and it looks like it, from the dynamics of the break in, it looks like it was it could be corporate espionage. Um, they forced entry into my office, took uh, went through the trouble of disconnecting my computer cable, my security cable, and stole my computer. It's totally totally ransacked. Mm-hmm. You're assuming a co-worker? Uh, I'm not assuming that, but I, I would say that it's likely, given what I see so far and what I've heard... Most of these were opened and the fronts were ripped off a lot of them. Anybody has access to the elevator? Is it, you, you've been shut off, you have a key to... Uh, yeah, but four by four? The lock, yes, we do. The lock in the fifth floor wasn't working, but there are only a limited number of people who would have known it. Mm-hmm. And bad news, okay? Okay. I have some files in my legal section that are missing. And they went directly to your computer, to your desk, to your files, to uh, Nicole's, to Patrick's. Fuck. Uh, I've had better days. Yeah, well, as we as I look around the office, it looks pretty clear to us that they were looking for specific information. It occurred sometime between uh, 1 a.m., we believe between 1 a.m. and 6 a.m. I think I know what time they were here. This is when my computer was shut down. There was actually no security violations, but the computer had some weird errors on it, like it was shut down, recorded around 3.21 a.m. That's totally premeditated. This is not a random burglar. They, they could, could definitely get in, and they could definitely make a mess of our site. They could redirect our site to a porn site. Very easily, if they had all of those things. Listen, Khalil, you know, we learned a lesson. And I hope it wasn't a fatal lesson. Yeah, I hope it wasn't a fatal lesson too, but maybe it was. Maybe it was a fatal lesson, but either way, I mean, we learned a lesson, and right now, you know, we deal with it. We got people that have come in that are helping us do the shit that we need to do, and as usual, we'll do the best that we can and deal with whatever happens and not get too upset about it. We still live in nice places, and we'll both move on to great jobs. So. Uh, you know, that's like worst case scenario. Would have been a fun year. We'll go start a different company. Do something a little less sensitive. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. <laughs> signal that you're doing? I'm sorry? What is this, like, hand signal? You have to look to answer that question. Why are you being so mean to me today? Because I haven't seen you for a long time, and every time I call you, you're like, yeah, I'll call you back, and you never do. I do call you back. No, you don't. I do. No, because I left you, like, four messages in the course of, like, three days. And I said, leave me a message if you can't get a hold of me. And you didn't. And you didn't even call me. Oh, you're exaggerating. Okay. Well, what are you doing? You're not, like, looking up things anymore. You're writing an email. It's because I And I'm going to leave you. (laughs) It was everything closed at 10. Do I have to go to the jail? Oh, so you're going to write an email and not tell me that's what you're doing now? And I'm sitting here waiting? It sounds so stark when you put things that way. You know what? You're supposed to already be on vacation with me right now, so. Not quite yet. Almost. Any minute. Bye. Can you take this back? Uh Uh-huh. Hold on a second.
Well, not just a bad day on Wall Street, a record-setting bad day on Wall Street. Friday, the 14th of April, 2000, no less the anniversary of the sinking of the Titanic. A Titanic struggle today for investors. In pointage terms, it has never been this messy, and it has never been this bad. Our business is in serious trouble. Our businesses? You yeah. mean because of auctions? A lot of reasons. Okay. I just want you to know the, the degree of, of, of uh, urgency. I don't think that I felt comfortable telling the executive committee as a whole, and I just think you should know. You mean because of the revenue numbers? Yep. I think we're personally at risk. I had, I've had some pretty ugly conversations with board members over the last couple of days. And so what are you saying? That the board would consider getting rid of us because of this? Yep. Okay, well, that's their prerogative. I, know, I mean, that's cool. I'm concerned about the problem. I'm concerned about the revenue. I don't want to give you the wrong idea. I'm deeply concerned about the revenue, but I'm not concerned about the board. Okay. Um, I'm not personally at risk. Anyway. No. Okay. I mean, I could be at risk for losing my job, potentially, theoretically. Again, that would surprise me, but that's possible. Um, but that wouldn't be the end of the world for me at this point. I think this is a serious crisis, Tom. What are the requirements that we're trying to fulfill? Uh, you know, and at a, at a very bare minimum level, uh -huh. uh, you know, at a very bare minimum level, our business requirements are very simple and they haven't changed. We need to be able to collect credit cards, we need to be able to collect electronic checks, we need to be able to collect debit cards, we need to be able to collect data on these things, and we need to be able to pass it to municipalities. Right. Listen, I, I hear you, I want to involve you guys, and I understand that you guys think that you know better than me, but... We don't know better, but we know that what we have today doesn't work. And no, we know you don't know that. What we have today does work. That's the problem. Why are we fixing it? We're fixing it because there are problems, because it's not going to do everything that we want it to do for the future. It's a great first step. All right? Whatever. We built... I'm not, I'm not, I, we're not going to get anywhere in this conversation. It's quite clear. And, and it's not like we have a bunch of geniuses slinging clothes here. That's not... I just don't want you guys to tell us, stop doing what you're doing, wait 10 days for us to figure out what we want so that you can rebuild something well, totally from you, scratch you're not based on what you what want. you're doing. If you ever want us to work together... Is this a conversation like... that you want to end by walking out? There's, I guess, tension, you know, or at least a um, confusion about, you know, the areas that you're going to take on, the areas you're not going to take on. I do want you to know a little bit about how my relationship with Khalil works because, you know, we're not really co-CEOs. But in some ways, we really are. Because at the end of the day, we have an agreement that, uh, that decisions regarding the company um, are made by the two of us together. Um, and as a result, I find myself functionally responsible for a lot of things that go way beyond technology. That's fine, but you know, respect that that we, there's a structure because for a reason. Roy, Roy just sounded like he was about to, you know, have a nervous breakdown. I'm just parking out front, right, right as we speak. So uh, I'll see you there. Bye. Right now, there's no other way to put it, we are getting blown out of the water. Our site is not as good as our competitor site sites. It's not. And that should scare the living daylights out of all of us. I, I'm a little frustrated as well, Tom, that, that it has to be laid out as a priority. It should be the MDF's priority all the time. Yeah, beat the competition. Yeah. We need to be given clear direction so that we can focus our energy on whatever it is that is the most important Very thing. Fair point. And, and it can't just be, you know, make the site fantastic.
That's just simply not specific enough. When I talk to somebody out there and I tell them I want to raise 200 million bucks at a you know humongous valuation that gives you milk fleet, you know, they look, go into the, the first thing they're going to do is to go into our site. And then after they go to the site, they go, hmm, who do they compete with? Easy go, yeah. link to go. And that happens to me every day, every, every day. day today. Mm -hmm. Too far behind, we're getting hurt. We're getting hurt in ways that you guys don't see. No, I getting, see. Because we're, Jose and I are, are on the front lines of that kind of pain. And we know how, how it could be, it could be a fatal blow. What do we do? What I'm hearing from you is that uh, is that you think I'm not the right person to lead this company strategically on technology. I know that on the ground, I'm not the person to manage technology day to day. I'm not the engineer, and I'm not the project manager, and. And that's why I'm so excited about Vasu. Because he knows how to operate a technology department. And he's going to do a great job. So I don't want this conversation to be about Vasu. I want this to be about, 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 about you. Okay. You don't respect my authority. I think it's safe to say it's difficult to me, not because, you know, I get high off of you respecting my authority, but because I just, I have this, I have a job that I'm, that I'm, that I'm trying to perform, and it's very difficult to perform that job when that's the case. You know, I've spent the last 20 years of my life on technology, and now, after I get to the point where I'm able to build an organization to do that, I'm just going to... You know, if, if, if we're co-CEOs, then we're co-CEOs. But don't tell me anything different. And if, if, if that's the way it works, then I need to know that that's the way you think it works. And you know what? I'll leave. It's the same discussion we had before. You know, it, it's, it's not going to work. I, 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 so I need to know, you know, what it is you want to do. And then I'll make a decision about whether I stay. Okay. I'm, I'm going to go on vacation for two weeks. And uh, I'll communicate with uh, you and I'll communicate with Julian. That's about it. And um, it's very difficult to do. You, you know that, you know, I have, I mean, I, I love you. But these, these, are, these are difficult things to say because um, you just need to make sure that uh, Neil Weisenfeld is appropriately received on the 20th, and that Melissa is taking care of him. Alex, this is Tom Herman. How are you? Good, I haven't spoken to you for a while. I'm at a point where the company is considering bringing in some, uh, some more senior talent. And so there's a very good chance that I'll be leaving and I need to negotiate a settlement with our board, basically. As they try to sort of consolidate leadership with, with one CEO, I become more and more of a problem, and I understand that. I, I am. That's my nature. They've asked me to take three-month time off, paid time off, uh, with continued vesting. So, so I feel like I should do. I should settle now instead of settle in three months. I mean, Tom's a friend of mine. You know, I mean, we've been working kind of twenty-hour days for a year and change on on this stuff. So it's it's tough, but. You know, it's, it's important to kind of separate the business from the personal. Yep. It's the right thing to do, you know, from the company's perspective.
he was basically the one that got me started, gave me the chance, you know. And I have gotten legal counsel at this point, and my counsel has told me, uh, don't leave the office. He said, go back in and tell them, and this is what I'm basically telling you, go back in, tell them that you're ready to work things out, um, and that you don't want to take a vacation uh, until you're given uh, formal notice of something or other that, that is uh, in writing and, and is sent to my counsel. Well, I, I wish we weren't on this path. I, I, I understand. I understand you're following counsel and you're doing what you need to do. So I, I you know, I, I know, I know that in <coughs> death, and so, you know, I would do the same thing. I just, please, please, as you go about this process, you know, anything you can do to keep the, the team, uh, e even if you don't agree with, with what's being done, you know, I'm trying to, I'm trying to keep it as, as positive as possible, so. It's not something that the rest of the company needs to know about. It could be between you and me and the board. All right. I mean, it could have a settlement attached. That includes a significant cash component. Um, I've requested that. I'm assuming that the board is working on that. But now I'm also telling the board that I will not, I will not leave the office until, um, until that is dealt with. Please, please don't take my change in, in attitude as, as anything personal. I still honestly have as first and foremost in my mind the, the, the interests of GovWorks, but, but not to the exclusion of of uh, doing what my own legal counsel suggests I should do. Okay. Thanks, Tom. So? I feel like I'm on the verge of becoming, of getting into a sort of a nasty fight with the board and with Kalil about my termination. Take a month and like get some perspective. You know? Get some perspective? Yeah. But what's gonna happen in a month? I mean I can't leave if, if Vasu has everyone pitted against each other and the entire tech team's gonna quit while I'm away. That's my problem. No, it's not anymore. Well, but it is my problem if I have one point two million shares in the company. Hey guys, I wanted to let you know where I am and what I'm doing. Okay, let me. There's not not much to write down. Um, I've been working on, and you can pass this message on to Clay if you want or not. Whatever. I've been working on the Louisiana State Portal thing uh, with AMS and with Microsoft, um, and I am continuing to finish that stuff. I'm here to work. Okay. I like my job, and uh, so I'm doing it. This letter is a, is a request for termination. I mean, why don't you want to why don't you want to negotiate this or talk about it before you go to this? And you and the board are on board with that. OK, because you understand that if there is no possibility for a cash settlement, it's going to get very ugly. And I would add that I would you know, much prefer that, uh, that you chill out a little bit um, instead, of, uh, instead of precipitating this. And uh, let me stay in the office while you try and work out uh, an adjustment to my employment agreement so that I can comfortably take a leave of absence, which is obviously I want to support you in making that happen. I don't know. You're making a mistake, but I understand that you need to run the business as you need to run it, so um, that's your prerogative. Thanks for the letter. Bye. <clears throat> Sorry, guys. That's okay. Go ahead. Actually, why aren't you on the executive committee call right now?
because I'm um, <laughs> officially just walking around with you to make sure everything's cool. They asked me to do that, so I said, oh, oh. great. Here. I didn't know what that meant, so. Um, yeah, I'm gonna hit the road. Great. Have you, have you just been downstairs? Yes. Everything's all set? Yes, Tom Herman has left and we've started the security measures with him. Do you know where Darren is? Darren is okay. out of the office. We're just on the phone with him and Karen. Okay. Darren has started the security process. Tom is no longer with the company. And he has been escorted out of the building. No. And uh, measures are being put in place. People are going to have, have to show their ID coming in and stuff like that. And, uh, no, no, I'm not kidding. Keep an eye out tonight, okay? Because we dismissed someone today, and, so, and we've had security issues in the past. Okay? And uh, let me give you my card. Under no circumstances, don't let anybody sweet talk you. Yeah. If, uh, if, if the person shows up whose picture you have there or anything, doesn't matter what they say. You know, if you have to force somebody room from the building, just do so. All right? Thanks, man. Okay. Thanks. Bye. Oh, God. This sucks so badly. He said, I mean, I could not have, I could not have, I mean, he said, Tom's acting like a mensch, and he's acting like a grown-up, and he's doing things that are productive for this company, that I'm going to be supportive of him having what I think is an outlandishly generous offer of half of what he, I mean, that would basically, that would give him in a year and a half, two thirds of his total ownership. Um, but I'll tell you, if he's acting like a shit and he's calling and he calls me and he's acting like a pain in the ass, then he's gonna get exactly what he deserves because he's a kid acting like a kid in a grown up world. And the thing is that he's being, Joel's being harsh. I mean, Joel is harsh. Joel is very harsh, but he's right. He doesn't trust me. He doesn't trust me. He doesn't trust me. That was painful for both of us, Tom. I think that you got bad counsel, and I, and I, and I, you know, I say that, you know, not with a lot of information, but with some conversations about it as well. I don't say it with no information, and I told you that yesterday was in the, when I was on the plane from Pittsburgh. I think that was bad counsel, and I think it put me in a really difficult position. There was basically no alternative. You wouldn't leave the office on a vacation or on a leave or anything unless there was a termination letter in hand. I did not want to, you gotta believe me Tom, I did not want to terminate you. But I did, I did feel strongly enough about the need for your absence. But that doesn't mean I want you out of the business. It doesn't mean that I want you to lose anything. Money or pride or anything. I want, if, even if this business is a failure, I want everybody who's involved to know that we did all the things that we should have done to make it as successful as possible. Uh, as some of you may know, uh, right now, uh, as of yesterday, uh, Tom Herman is no longer part of the operational day-to-day uh, -day of the business. I've known Tom since we were 15, or 14 or 15. Uh, I, I love him. And this has been one of the more difficult experiences really of, of my life uh, and I think that that for him it has been as well 
he and I have built this company together. Just as we have all built this company together, it just so happens that he and I have built it together since the first day. There's probably a natural question, because what's your relationship with Tom right now? And the answer to that, honestly, is I don't know. As, as difficult as it might seem, in, in, in Tom's honor here, and with respect to him, I'd like to do the cheer. I'll, I'll, I'll lead it this morning. So I, haven't, I haven't done it in months. So. Pajamas, huh? <laughs> They're purple. Hi. Come on. Hello, honey. Come on in. Hi. Mm. Next week will be my first week out of the office. That must feel good. Yeah, it's the power politics part that is a little hard to stomach. Yeah. To see people you started with who yep. are engaged in that. He's aggressive, and he's going to get what he wants, and he's certainly Machiavellian. But. The values that you grew up with were that people came before things and that the, the intensive energy that goes into anybody's personal life and professional life has to do with caring for people and how they are and how they feel. And that didn't seem to be part of this new world. People's personal feelings. Right. I disagree. Well, you didn't um, share very many of your personal feelings. For example, that you were no longer at Governor's. And I had spoken with you the night before, Thursday night, and I said, how are things going at work? And you said, fine. Right. And I had actually, that was Thursday night, you said? Yeah. Yeah, I had already <clears throat> gone through all of this. I just wasn't ready to talk about it. I didn't see any point because I, I was, I was, uh, it wouldn't have been a nice conversation. Did it have to be a nice conversation? I'm your mother. But all I'm saying is I'm not sorry that that part of your life is over because I don't think that's a healthy way of life and I, I didn't like what it did to you. Maybe I wanted a way out. The issue with Tom is not what's happening in the company. The issue with Tom is like number eight of what's happening in the company. The issue is Tom will work itself out. What's happening in the company is we have flat revenues, we have <clears throat> bloated infrastructure, we have sales cycle that are much longer than we anticipated, we have implementation processes that are more complex, we don't have a clear path to cash yet, we have some acquisitions that we are working on but may not work out. Um, and we have a bunch of bullshit personal stuff that takes up people's time when none of it's going to mean anything at all if we don't make a successful company. That's what's happening. that I'm being pushed out? Yes, I do, So Tom. why should I sit back and let that happen? You don't be, be rational about it. It we is rational. Our employment agreements don't 
protect us. We don't have any legal case. That's fine. The only thing you can do is screw Clint. up the company and screw up yourself. Khalil, you think this is about equity. First of all, let me tell you two things. First of all, it's not about equity for me. It's not about ownership. It's about the business. It's about what I'm doing, what I'm building, what I've been building. I think that's the about people you. That yes, that is about it's me. It's about growing and learning, a building a business, and they don't care whether we grow and learn. I they understand that. I understand that, Khalil. That's... I'd rather see GovWorks fail than risk personal relationships. They're just more important. You know, <clears throat> the thing that I'll probably remember more than anything else about the last year and a half, Tom, is the moment with when, I, when you told me they don't trust me. Things change. That's the best part. Daddy. Yes, Tia. Not yet, but close. I, I also want you to know, despite any and all the other things that may or may not be happening, I. Uh, have had a great time over the last year, and I and I I love you. I really do. I love you too. So I'm sorry that things are the way they are, but even if I'm angry, Answer bankruptcy. There's not going to be an orderly wind down. Are you guys still implementing cities? Well, the sad thing about it is the business has finally turned a corner in that respect. It's very, very, very tragic. We'll end up with zero. Not even stock. We won't end up with that. Huh? Right, zero. Absolutely not. <laughs> wow. Have you ever talked to Dora? Dora? No, not, not since she moved to Florida. Have you? A little bit. That was the saddest fallout of, of the entire two years from my perspective. But no, it's not. The, sad, the saddest fallout was us. From my perspective. Then Dora, then, then all the investors and people that believed in us. You're never going to go anywhere. It's, it's your, it's your, it is your baby. It's going to stay that way. You can't, even if you set it up for adoption, it doesn't, there's the genetic link, you know, so it's not going to go away. So if I turn this up, then you have to pay royalty? Yes. 